and welcome back to my channel Divinely Guided Tarot. If you're new here, my name is Angel and I'm here to bring you another general collective energy reading. This message could be for all signs, so please remember to take only what message resonates with you inside in your spirit and leave the rest behind. And as always, guys, thank you so very much for everything that you do to help this channel grow. It is greatly appreciated. I'm going to go ahead and use our Lightworker Oracle deck to go ahead and pull our messages. Um, our energies for today. We've been pulling from our Star Seed Oracle a lot lately, and I feel like we need to switch it back over to the Lightworker Oracle deck. Um, I'm feeling like there's just a lot of messages coming out for this particular channel, and we are a Lightworker channel, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> so let's go ahead and take a peek and see what the message is. Holy Spirit, please come through. Shield, guard, protect this portal while I channel divinely guided messages for my beautiful subscribers. Help me with messages that they need to hear at this divine right time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. They wanted me to switch this up. They want me to pull one kipper, and they want me to pull two or three of the uh, Light Worker Oracle decks. So let's be obedient. <laughs> Holy Spirit, what is the message going to be focused on today? Please help us out with what the message is going to be about. Is the message. Thought I had an idea of what they were going to be talking about, and now they're just like kind of switched gears on me and threw me off course. Let's see what surprise they have, right? I like it when the spirit surprises me that way. Holy well, Spirit, what you got? What's the message? What's the message? Oh, it's a message about great fortune. Why? Because you deserve this. Why? Because this is what's coming to you. This is what's already here waiting for you. That's what they're telling me. It's already here. It's already happened. It's already here. And we have the Mintaken card. Uh, longing for home, belonging, the original light worker. Yeah, I could very well be talking to somebody um, who is part of the 144,000 or somebody who is preparing the way for one of the 144,000, meaning your words are going to be impactful to the heirs of, of the world. You know what I mean? You're going to be helping an individual who has a divine path. Oh, this could also be you. You stare up at the sky a lot. You stare up at the stars a lot. You hate when it's cloudy because you can't see the moon. You long for home. You don't have a home. Not here on this planet. You don't feel like you've been at home. You don't feel like you've ever really achieved that. So we also have the leap card. This is taking a leap of faith. This is you going first. This is you forging that path. This is saying God's going to be here to catch you if you fall. God's going to be here to pull you up out from underneath the water if you fall. Right? We just had um, our previous message that um, I recorded right before this one picked up on that same kind of energy. God saying, go, leap, jump for joy, um, you know, celebrate, call in that divine blessing because it's here, it's ready. You just have to be willing to say, I don't belong in that old energy that I was in before. This great fortune is here. Ooh. Um, God wants you to feel confident in your spiritual gifts too, that your spiritual gifts will be abundant for you. Somebody is trying to use their spiritual gifts um, to bring in wealth of some kind. Maybe, maybe you're just trying to use your spiritual gifts in your every day-to-day -day job, the job that pays the bills, puts the food on the table and stuff like that. I, I can say I want that dream too. That's why I'm on YouTube doing these messages um, because then I can couple the thing I love doing the most, which is communicating with beautiful spirits and souls like yourselves and deliver the messages that God already puts on my heart for you. You know, I pray for you. I pray for those messages for you. And I'm very, very happy to be able to deliver those messages. 
Is it a lot of hard work? Absolutely. It's like another full-time job. I work good 80, 90 hours a week. It's hard, but it's rewarding all at the same time. It says, don't dim your light to fit in. And you know what that means. This means that you were designed, you were set apart from the very beginning. God set you apart from everybody else so that you could come to this world to be an inspiration on the world. This great fortune could also be you being the gift to the world. God's blessing the world with you. Did you ever think of that? Do you ever feel like, I wonder why I feel like I'm the only person who understands this little bit of understanding or knowledge that God gave to me. Like you can talk and people look at you like, like they can't, they can't get to where you're at. You're so far out of a lot of people's leagues of understanding that you feel alone. You know, and it's because you're not afraid of the unknown, where other people are terrified of the unknown. People will pull the shutters, pull the bed curtains closed, hide under their blankets. They will choose to hide from reality and stay in the matrix just because it's comfortable. We become lazy as people, as human beings. We, we care more about comfort and self-gratifying um, emotional reactions than we do anything else. You're changing that. You're showing people how to live in a real world with real problems and how to overcome everything, how to face things with courage and strength. You're teaching people how to find a way. You're teaching people the truth that God taught you. Everything that you learned in your lifetime about how to live a better life, how to defeat dark emotions, how to defeat, um, you know, darkness in all of its forms and even its subtle forms. Like you're in that arena now, like you're, you're playing chess with the devil and he's sending in little spies. I mean, he's having to come at you in non-obvious ways now. The enemy had to up his ante to get to you. So you're just like playing this chess game with the devil until you get to the very end and you're like, ah, I had a get out of jail free card all along. <laughs> so sorry, Charlie, <laughs> but you're teaching people how to play that game of life. And maybe you played the game of life as a kid growing up. I know I did. It was the most complicated game to put together and it was not nearly as rewarding as Monopoly and Risk, but man, the game of life was always a lot of fun. You know what's funny? I always ended up with twins in that game. And lo and behold, I have twins in real life. <laughs> right? I love it. I love it. Okay. So standing on the truth and teaching people how to live in that truth. Now, we have the emperor coming out here. Very strong, very stable, very supportive leader style energy. Whether you are a divine feminine or a divine masculine, um, or you're just holding your, your emperor energy upon you. I feel both masculine and feminines in this group that are resonating with this message today. So far, you are leading with the strength, the alpha of the pack. You are identifying yourself as an alpha leader. Okay. And no matter where you go, people are going to start respecting you as an alpha your energy is going to command it in certain rooms. When you walk into certain rooms, people are going to stop and say, who is that? Because they're going to see you taking leaps of faith where other leaders won't dare to go. How many of you have said, oh, I don't trust politics because no matter how good a person is, they may have the best intentions, but they always end up being controlled by the bureaucracies by the by the people behind the politics they're behind the money what's good for the country is good for what's what's good for the pocketbooks of the wealthy right mm -mm. not this leader this leader does everything different and this person this energy that i'm talking about 
has a very strong aversion to people telling them, this is how we used to do it. This is how it's always been done. And this person is like, ooh, tell that to me again. Tell that to me again. This is how we've always done it. And then that person takes that ball of paper and crumples up those rules and tosses it behind his shoulder and says, anybody who likes the old way, you are free to leave. We're building a new team from the ground up. We are building a utopia. We are building a life for humanity. We are no longer going to care about the wealthy in this world. We are going to care about all people so that everybody can attain that kind of wealth, not only in spirit, but in the flesh. No more. I'm, I'm hearing some vows that this person made in private. I'm just kind of asking permission right now if I can share those vows that you took, whoever is resonating with this. They're saying no, keep those vows private. This is a, I, I am permitted to tell you that somebody took a very strong vow, one-on-one um, -on -one with God before campfire, actually, sitting down at a campfire by themselves and staring into the fire long enough to come to an understanding between God and you. And you made a vow. And the vow was about the people that God wanted you to protect, the people that God wanted you to lead, the movement movement that you will be creating. And that's why I'm not allowed to speak on what your vow was about and what you promised God that you would do because the movement is not ready. Did I give enough hints? <laughs> and um, we had the King of Cups pop out in reverse. Okay, so I'm seeing here a age old classic battle between the enemy and you. Now remember I told you, it's like playing chess with the devil at this point in time. Your energy suggests to me like you're playing a sit-down chess game. You're no longer using swords and you're no longer scared of the boogeyman under your bed and the monster inside of the closet. You can just unzip the zipper, snap your fingers, make it all go away. What else has the devil got, right? He has his cunning. He has his wits. So you're coming up against a dark prince. And when I say a king in cups of re in reverse, I kind of see this as a dark prince. Prince, not a king. Somebody who is in the reverse doesn't get the uh, satisfaction of me calling him a divine king. Not even king of the underworld. This is somebody who's selfish, thinks only of himself. And that's prince vibes to me. Immature, not quite ready to lead, leading with um, selfish intentions. Me, 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 I, 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 look at me, look at me. Look at what I have. Look at all my riches. Look at what God has blessed me with. And then like rubbing it in everybody's face. Oh, this is a person who would most certainly be willing to go into politics, to go into office, to keep the system and the matrix running exactly how it's supposed to run. Exactly the way the enemy wants it to be run because this person has been promised riches beyond his wildest dreams. Some people will sell their souls for far less. You, on the other hand, are sitting in this upright. You know what it takes to be a divine leader. You know what it takes to live with God's wisdom and love for even your enemy. That's a true hero right here. And I want you to know that this enemy will not be able to beat you in this chess game. But you do have a divine opponent. Somebody equally yoked to match you in this path. You know, your formidable opponent, your nemesis, they're calling them. <coughs> <coughs> and there he goes. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh. Ooh, throat chakra bit attack there. Let's go ahead and fix it. 
I'll still get the message out. Don't you worry. <clears throat> like I said, the enemy plays dirty. The enemy plays dirty. So, Holy Spirit, please reveal this King of Cups in reverse. I want to know a little bit more about our enemy <coughs> and what we have to come up against it. <coughs> oh, you sucker. I'm going to get that message out. Oh, yes, I am. Let's see if it's still recording. Yeah, it's still recording. You can't. Not today, devil. Not today. Right, guys? Not today. So, this king of cups in reverse, this prince of selfishness, this dark prince over here, this is him. <clears throat> He's finding it very difficult to come up against you. He's finding it very difficult and very daunting to come up against the light worker. How can I get close to this person when the very light that they're emitting burns my skin to ash? How can somebody like this, how can somebody who resonates with something so evil possibly come up against you? They are trying to find their own courage to oppose you, to come up against you. I see somebody that works with you. I actually see two masculines who work together or two masculine energies that work together. Could be two females holding masculine energies. Um, but I do see two strong masculine energies that are coming out together in a workplace that are kind of rivals in the workplace. Maybe they've come up um, against each other in the department meetings, you know? Maybe my ideas or your ideas or his ideas are being, you know, them taking credit for, for your work, your good deeds, you know? Maybe there's a little bit of that going on, I see. <clears throat> somebody who wants to... Somebody who's far too curious about you. Do you have an energy around you, I wonder, that is constantly asking you questions about the status of your projects? Like, oh, how are you doing? What thoughts are you thinking of now? You know, what aha revelations have you come across? And then like really trying to just pick your brain, trying to think about how do you think up all this stuff and then them applying your wisdom into their own projects. This is somebody who's pretending to be your friend, somebody who is pretending to be just like you. We have the magician out here and the hierophant. Now the magician alone or the hierophant alone, not bad. Even these guys together, not bad. We have a strong masculine energy that is all about that manifestation, all about that spiritual, emotional alchemy. Somebody who's very close to God, somebody who finds themselves, uh, holds themselves accountable for their actions. You know, somebody who forgives, somebody who says they're sorry, somebody who actually aligns themselves with what God wants for them. But when we consider this energy being for this dark prince over here, Mm -mm. This is bad news bears. This is somebody who is pretending to be your best friend, somebody pretending to be your buddy, somebody pretending to be just as spiritual, loving, and God-fearing as you, somebody who pretends to do all the right things, but really they're using their gifts, their divine gifts that God gave them, their natural ability to weave creation and magic and illusion in the world this person is weaving illusions that they are just as noble as you when really all they want to do is take that balance that spirituality the that that those divine blessings and claim it for themselves that's who's in your energy that's who's up against you mm, i don't like it I don't like it. I want to dive in a little bit deeper. I want to know <clears throat> what the motives are. What's he coming for? Who's this? And we have the two of wands and the four of wands. 
they're coming for your um they're coming for your home they're coming for they're coming for blood meaning they want your life they want to copy everything that you're doing they want your energy they want your marriage like if you have a happy life they want that they don't like that you're happy if you're not involved with anybody they want that happiness that you feel even though you're single and alone you know maybe your kids are well behaved if you have children and they're jealous that their kids are brats and your kids are good I'm talking they want everything down to the way you smell, holy, like that jealous. They're that jealous. They always smell so good and always dressing so nice. And they always just seem to have everything. If Man, if I woke up in your skin every day, that's what they're thinking. Like they want, they're sending that out into the universe that they want your life. They want you to be gone and they want to step into your role. That's a dangerous person to me. That is a very dangerous person to me because maybe this person did start off to be a very good friend and then jealousy just threw them over the deep end. Oh, that's their motive. That's their intention. Yeah. Five of swords. All they are trying to do is to bring you down and off their tank. This person, this prince of darkness that's coming after you in your reputation, they're trying to knock you down a peg. That's what I'm hearing. That's what they're telling me. They want to knock you down a peg. They think they're so smart. And, they, and God's like, yeah, he is smart. I gave him a very smart brain. And he's listening to everything I say. Ugh. Ooh. Ooh. And judgment's coming. Okay? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. You're going to love this. You're going to love this. Divine Collective, I have never picked up on this energy before. And I've never picked on a, on a future timeline that shows exactly what I'm going to be able to show you right now. This person, King of Cups in reverse, has a divine counterpart they've never met. A divine lover, a divine soulmate and partner that they don't even know is in existence. Okay? While they're spending all their time weaving their illusions, using their trickery to get at you for your life, your divine love, your, your future destiny, their destiny is approaching. What God always planned for them a divine twin. This king of cups in reverse has a divine counterpart waiting for them who is now being released to come to them. And what do you think she sees whenever she comes up to her counterpart? She goes, oh, heck no. Uh-uh. I have, I have not worked my entire life to find you, and then you end up being a karmic Jezebel spirit trapped in my man's body. You know? Nope. And she walks away. Why? Because judgment came out with it. That is this person's judgment. They have been blessed with their twin flame. And she's going to choose somebody else. I feel bad for her that her partner chose such a dark path. This is another reason why I don't like reading into karmic energy, you guys, because I feel bad for her. And then it makes me want to read for her, you know? Um, it could just go on and on and on and on. Hurting people hurt other people. I mean, we see it everywhere. This is the judgment. This is what's coming for this dark prince energy. He's going to be blessed with his everything. And God's going to watch and say, you chose. You chose to be in this position. I delivered your twin, but you chose not to be ready for her. Now she's free to accept your rejection and move on. Oh 
So I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I don't want to read the karma anymore. I don't want to read what's going to happen. You and I both know that when love was taken from us, that divine partner, when our hearts were broken, when the person we love chose not to choose us, not to love us, it destroyed us, did it not? It tore us down to bare bones and God had to breathe dry bones back to life to take me out of it. I know it's the same for you, I feel it. That is the worst punishment I feel that anybody could ever have is to finally be reunited with that perfect spouse, that perfect mate that you've searched the world for, and she walks away, or he walks away, because that person was so evil, and they turned, they, they ripped up their contract and threw it away to be jealous and want your life. They wanted your life so bad, they ripped up their own contract. So God is showing them, look at what you just threw away. Case closed. That person has to live with that now for the rest of his life. And he will. The one that got away. All because his lust for your life caused him to sacrifice his own. I feel sorry for this dark prince's counterpart and I pray that that woman is blessed with a divine counterpart of her own God please deliver her from that fate into one that is deserving for her I know we didn't read for her but I still want to pray for her because <clears throat> I feel like many of you may fall into that category too And you know what? I think I might make this a part two. And like I said, I feel bad for this, this Queen of Cups energy. And I think I'm going to, I want to read for the Queen of Cups next. She got a, a raw hot dog at a five-star facility. She expected a, a five Michelin star meal, you know, personally cooked by Gordon Ramsay himself. And she got a raw hot dog. Like a dog, like an actual dog would receive a raw hot dog from a package. Here you go. Mm -mm. We're gonna read for you, sweetheart, don't you worry. So if you are resonating as that queen of cups who you have been brought in to show this divine partner that you've, you basically screwed up, sir, I'm going to read on your future next, okay? So, let's get back to our original um, masculine energies here. I want final closing messages for the best advice to go ahead and, and move forward. Mm. Here we go. First message, right? Is be still before the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways. When they carry out their wicked schemes, refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. And that's from Psalm chapter 37, verse 7 through 8. Is that not the perfect advice that God wants you to know right now? Do not stoop to the wickedness of your enemy and do not be worried when you see them get away with stuff. Because guess what? Judgment has come in. And God knows exactly how to get this person's attention. God's going to bring through that divine feminine to say, my partner, I reject you because you've turned evil. They lost everything. And they didn't even know that they wanted that. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light 
so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. And that's from John chapter 20, verse 21. And that's, that's God coming through right there saying, when I say your light burns the flesh of darkness around you, it burns them, it hurts them. Evil can't come towards you. And when they try to attack you, they're basically hurting themselves because they're bouncing everything back on themselves, okay? This is beautiful because it says you are already going out into the world, shining your light, and your enemies will fall before you because they can't conquer it. Darkness can't snuff the light out when the light is eternal. You know what I mean? The enemy's not real smart when it comes to that kind of stuff. They think they can win, they can't win. You may win little foot battles and, you know, little digs, but we're just transmuting that darkness right off of us as you feed it to us, you know? So darkness can't hurt me. It fuels me. And for all you other Capricorns out there, you know the devil card is our card in the tarot. What can you do to a Capricorn? What can you do to me? When I was born in hell and I came from hell and I fought my way out of it, skipping, dancing, singing, and blowing raspberry kisses at every oogie boogie monster underneath my bed. Oh yeah, you know? Hellhounds come up to me as a child and I'm like, puppies, yay! And then they run away because I'm like Elvira, you know, I'm gonna love you and squeeze you and hug you forever. And they're like, oh, get away from me. Your light is burning my skin. Yes, I knew how powerful I was even then. And I feel like you're channeling that kind of energy too. Your demons can't touch you. You are the greatest superhero of all time. You know, you're a toddler walking into a viper pit and nothing can touch you. That's power. <laughs> it says, but the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. So my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will fail and be thoroughly disgraced. Their dishonor will never be forgotten. And that's from Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 11. That's a promise. The enemy's wicked schemes and wicked deeds will never be forgotten. When they come up against you, they come up with the hand of God. Kind of feel like a mic drop moment like there's really nothing more to say there really isn't anything more to say you are far more powerful than your enemy and your enemy will receive the worst karma possible by seeing his true love and realizing he threw it all away and sacrificed it all to try to take somebody else's destiny So we're going to go ahead and switch gears here. We're going to go ahead and talk about with our part two here. We're going to talk about with our um, the uh, Queen of Cups energy that is bringing judgment on her divine counterpart, the King of Cups, this Prince of Darkness energy in reverse. Okay, so we're going to pick up with this particular energy so we can give this Queen of Cups some information because I really feel like her energy is in our collective and it resonated with you. So we're going to go ahead and work on this one next. I'm going to take a short break and then we'll be back. Okay, guys, thank you so much for everything that you're doing out in the world. Thank you for staying true to God's promises. I'm proud of you. Take care of yourselves. God bless you all. <laughs> 